So we're three games into the Arna slot era and of course it is the international break so I thought it was a good time to take stock of where things are up to in the new manager's reign and how he is getting on at the start of a new life at Liverpool and of course the surface level stuff is looking pretty good isn't it? Liverpool's second in the league at the moment, they've played three games and won all three of them in, in comfortable fashion as well you have to say and zero conceded, they're the only team who have managed that Seven scored, only City who top the league at the moment have done better than that. And also, of course, in all that, a win at Manchester United, which, of course, last season was really hard to come by, despite the fact Liverpool played them three times and finished way ahead of them in the league, didn't manage to beat Manchester United once. So a victory at Old Trafford, always going to ingratiate a new manager to, to the supporters, isn't it? So he's got all that and all those numbers looking very good, but... While those early signs are looking very, very positive on the surface, I wanted to take a little bit of a deeper look into things and look, try and work out really, if is this sustainable? Is this a really good football team that we're seeing? Do the results match up to the underlying performance and can Arna Slot keep things going? So I've had a little dig into those underlying numbers and, and had a look at how Liverpool are functioning as a team. And I think a good place to start maybe is, is in attack. Obviously, Liverpool have always been strong in that area in recent years, definitely under Jurgen Klopp. That was a feature of the play. So how has Arna Slot got on in terms of sustaining that? Now, I know not everybody loves expected goals uh, as a measure of anything, really. And I admit you have to use it in the right way. You have to use it by apl applying the knowledge you've already got to it. You can't just use it alone uh, as a measure. But I, th I do think it gives you an idea of whether you know what you're seeing in performance terms is sustainable, whether it can carry on or whether... For example, in, in terms of finishing, whether Liverpool are just on a lucky run in terms of scoring from very few chances um, and those underlying numbers don't necessarily support that they are a good team who can keep this going. So I've had a look at those and obviously Liverpool's expected goals they've generated in the Premier League so far is 6.8 for, of course, seven goals scored. So I think that shows that really... You know, they're tracking in line, they, they, they've got what they deserved in terms of the chances that created. And um, City are the only team with a slightly better XG, they've got 7.1, but they've actually managed to score nine goals from that. Of course, it helps when you get a penalty. City have had one of those, Liverpool haven't yet, and that helps bump you up and, and shows that really they're, they're finishing slightly above uh, what, what you would usually expect in terms of XG. So, City doing well in, term, in both measures, really, and that's why they're up there. But I do think that it's worth looking at when you strip that penalty out that Manchester City got in Haaland, of course, dispatched, as he always does. Uh, the non-penalty expected goals. So this, again, just gives you an, an idea of in sort of open play and, and general football, how, how the teams are, are faring in terms of the opportunities they're creating. And interestingly, Liverpool are topping this measure with 6.8 non-penalty expected goals generated to City's 6.3. So that suggests that Liverpool's open play creation generally is, is very, very good. The attack is running well at the moment and Arna Slot has done very well to, to kind of keep that going. So that's encouraging. And again, look at some of the other numbers around the attack and, and what do they tell us? So Liverpool, 48 shots they've had uh, so far this season, second only to Nottingham Forest, who surprisingly actually show up quite well in some of these early statistics, which I think shows you that you... Yes, you can't read too much into them, but because obviously Nottingham Forest, I guess, in terms of they've had two home games, maybe more straightforward games than you would expect. I don't expect those to be at the top of the league, but I think the fact that City and Liverpool are near the top does show you that you can read something into it. So Liverpool's second anyway in terms of shots with 48, second to Forest with 53, so they have really had a good start to the season. I also wanted to take a look at shot distance as well, which is how close Liverpool on average, you're getting to the opposition goal before they take the shots, and that is 14 yards. Again, second in the Premier League, only to, to Newcastle this time, who's 13.1 yards away, Liverpool's 14. And so it shows you that when they are taking shots, they're shit taking them on average quite close to the opposition goal, so they're carving out quality chances. And I, I think this is an interesting measure that Liverpool is second in that and doing well. And, and Newcastle, I would say, are a very good team, so you know, you expect them to create high quality chances, but. I think this is an important measure for Liverpool because they had a high XG in the final season under Klopp. They were generating um, a lot of opportunities and, and, and you know it kind of underperformed in that sense. But your shot distance, I had a, I had a look back at this, was 17.2 yards. So that to me shows you that Liverpool were taking slightly more pot shots. They were adding to their XG total by having quite a few shots from distance. They weren't always creating the quality of chance. And I did say about this manager that one of the things you would maybe want to see under him is maybe take less shots, maybe take fewer shots across a game, 
but to take better quality shots and in better areas. And I think the fact that they're second in the Premier League at the moment for lowest shot distance is very, very encouraging. It shows that they're doing a little bit of that. And, and, and as I said, they had the, a, a really high XG on, in Klopp's final season, but they underperformed it because a lot of it was you know, taking a few pot shots from distance and it adding up to a high XG rather than constantly carving out quality opportunity. I mean, they did a bit of both, but too many of those long distance shots, I would say, and that led to them underperforming their XG, their attacking XG pretty significantly. And meanwhile, Arsenal and City didn't generate as much XG, but they overperformed theirs. And therefore, that helped them really in terms of where they finished because they were creating fewer opportunities but higher quality. So we are seeing that in the numbers from Arna slot so far. And again, I just think that's one of the encouraging aspects that the XG looks in line with the goals. They're taking a lot of shots, which is very encouraging, but the shot distance is close. So these are high quality attacking opportunities that they're carving out on a regular basis. And I think that is, you know, bodes well really in terms of their attack and shows that, you know, they could be right up there and they can keep this going, certainly on the evidence of this first three games anyway. So now I'm going to have a look. Anyway, the, the defence, and, and of course, there's two sides to the game. You can't just be good in attack. Defence is a really important uh, aspect in Liverpool. One area you would have said that needed to improve on last season, wasn't it? And I think we know that they've had zero goals conceded so far this season. They're the only team in the Premier League who boasts that statistic. So on the surface, going very well. But I would also say that the underlying numbers are also very, very good from this. So it's, again, very, very encouraging. The expected goals against is only 2.4. That is the third best in the league, uh, just behind the Manchester City on 2 and Forest on 2.1. So Forest right up there again. I told you I had a surprisingly good start to the season so far. But of course... Manchester City up there, as you would expect, don't give up many opportunities. Um, just seven shots on target against for Liverpool as well. Again, that that's second best in the Premier League, so really good. And the fact that Manchester City are top with six shows you that this is another hallmark of really, really uh, good teams. And the quality of the, the chances or shots that they're giving up, I think, is interesting as well. The post-shot expected goals. So are you getting players in front of you, getting bodies in front of shots? Are you making sure that they're from difficult areas? Post-shot XG sort of all adds all that in really is, into its calculations. And Liverpool uh, post-shot XG against is 1.7. So again, that is very, very good. It's, it puts them around second in the Premier League. Manchester City top again. We really do know that they are a very good team, but the underlying numbers absolutely show it. And theirs is 1.2. Uh, in comparison so Liverpool doing well there and opposition shots per 90 as well so how often are the opposition having a shot at your goal and again Liverpool second in this measure with 7.67 City top again with 7 so it shows you not allowing a lot of shots across the 90 minutes from your opposition just around 7.5 for Liverpool that is very very good and just shows you that you know they're well structured they're making it difficult for the opposition to get good quality shots but shots of any kind really they are really just uh, keeping the opportunities out and that again is something that makes the defensive record okay I don't think it's sustainable in that they're going to concede zero goals throughout the season but I do think it's an impressive underlying start in terms of suggest that defensively they are going to be very very solid and I think that is important because you know again last season you look they had the third best expected goals against uh, and ended up conceding more than both Manchester City and Arsenal and you would say that you know, Liverpool's attack was doing well last season. You would say that the biggest difference between those sides was that defensive record, and that was an area for massive improvement for Liverpool. So already they are showing that. They're ahead of Arsenal in these statistics. They're just behind City, just on the, the coattail, so very, very close to them in terms of performance. And so that bodes very, very well, I think, in terms of what that means for an improved defensive record this season, and that could take Liverpool into the title race deeper, could keep them closer to Manchester City and Arsenal, or that is certainly the hope or what we're seeing uh, from these first three games. Now, there's a few other things I kind of wanted to talk about, not necessarily attack and defence, but more kind of general uh, aspects of play that I've been impressed by or have seen so far. And I think one of them is that the one thing I've been impressed the most by so far is just structure. This is a very structured team looking at it, in my opinion. I mean, it's on both sides of things, really. So on the defensive aspects, they just look so solid in the structure. Having those two holders there gives them real license to get forward in it, but they do it in a really structured way and they make sure that, you know, when they're trying to outnumber the opposition in attack, that they always have somebody covering off in midfield and the shape is really good and the numbers are always there so that either they can nip, nip any counters in the bud or 
get bodies back fairly quickly to make sure they can slow that down and then get back into shape. So that again is something I've, I've really been impressed by is that defensive structure. And again, it comes from Slot's kind of preferred defensive formation. He did say he didn't like to play in a 4-2-3-1, but I think you can really see the 4-2-3-1 shape in the way that Liverpool defend or a lot of the time anyway, or sometimes they push out into a 4-2-4 in the way they press. But again, always with those two in the middle, really protecting your defence and you know, Liverpool were at times last season too easy to counter on. Too, you know, in these the games against Manchester United were probably the best examples of that, um, and, and, and a little bit weak in the middle. Whereas now, when you've got that solid structure with two there, I think defensively it looks a lot better. And I also like the structure in an attacking sense as well. I think in every single game, Liverpool have come up in terms of uh, up against the challenge really in terms of how are you going to progress the ball up against the opposition press, and it, it, every single time. Arna Slot seems to have a solution in terms of how he's going to build the, build up, Is whether that's kind of moving to almost a three at the back and pushing someone into midfield or whether to create a three in that central midfield with the two holding midfielders and Trent Alexander-Arnold or other ways of just, he's just trying to move the opposition around and creating real structure in the formation to progress the ball. And again, it's not something that Liverpool were incredible at last season. It's something that has been known as a slot strength and why he was actually quite adamant about formation wise he likes to mix things up because the build up is so fluid and that again you know when you're coming up against teams who are going to try and find weaknesses in the way you do things to have multiple ways of building up I think is, is hugely encouraging uh, from Arna Slot and shows that he's got real real structure in this side so that is another really exciting aspect I think if there's one thing that maybe you would say you, you're concerned about so far is trying to look for weaknesses quite hard at the moment things have been going very well um, but if one thing that maybe the manager would want to improve after the international break, it's maybe those kind of slow starts that Liverpool are having. That's not necessarily a slow start in terms of then giving up chances or anything like that. That was a feature of Jurgen Klopp's final season, definitely slow starts that were, were leading to con the concession of goals. But maybe slow starts in terms of what the attack is doing. I mean, of the 6.8 expected goals that Liverpool have generated so far... Uh, in this season 1.43 of those have come in the first half so just 21 percent so that shows that the attack is not firing from the off now there could be an argument to say that maybe that's a feature maybe slot wants his team to kind of work things out and take things slow in the first half but also I would imagine he would just like them to start a little better to play a little bit more slick football in those opening periods um, and not maybe waste time because obviously you can't just give yourself the second half to attack you have got to score early goals from time to time so I think that's something he would like to maybe improve after the international break but as I say it's a you know splitting hairs really it's such a, a small concern at this stage we'll see uh, how he goes at when we're outside of a, a, a bigger sample size so it'll be interesting to see if that continues and another thing again not really even a concern I would say but it'd be interesting is that Arna Slot has only had to make one change to his start in 11 so far this season and I mean he made that really at half time against Ipswich in bringing Canate on he's had a very very settled uh, start in 11 uh, across the three games but of course after this international break it really starts to ramp up you've got seven games in just 21 days and he's going to have to use the full squad so the challenge there is okay can you keep this style of football can you keep uh, this this form going if you are to make changes from game to game and that'll be really interesting to see if he's able to do that and how his team uh, kind of functions in terms of that because obviously you know it's quite easy to build up a rhythm when you are sticking with the same start in 11 but if you start to rotate things then you know do you does your performance uh, struggle a little bit do, do things change very very interested to see how that goes in but I would say Overall, I think the underlying numbers look absolutely fantastic. I think Liverpool have looked fantastic in terms of the performance. And of course, he sits second in the league, level on points of the lead as Manchester City. So you've got to be happy with what, hap what, what is going on so far and have a lot of optimism for what's to come. So do let me know in the comments what you think. How impressed have you been by Arna Slots Liverpool so far? What areas do you think they can improve and what areas have you been massively impressed by uh, during what has been an impressive start no doubt about it do let me know in the comments and as ever if you can like the video massively appreciated and if you're new to this channel please do click subscribe i had the biggest month ever on the channel in august so i wanted to thank everyone for that really really appreciate everybody who tunes in everybody who comments so many of you i see the same faces in the comments as well and i massively appreciate that we're building a little bit of a community here i really do appreciate it and so much more to come across this international 
international break and of course after the international break it ramps up yet again so many games to come so really looking forward to that so i'll see you guys very soon